say hello this morning to Patrice Banks. She is the author. Of, I, ha- I have to get this title right because it's a long one, Patrice. You've, you've, you've handicapped me here. This is the Girls <laughs> Auto Clinic Glove Box Guide. That's not easy to say. Thankfully, it's a very easy book to read, though. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's good to have you with us. You're now you're in Philadelphia. Yes. And you are experiencing the kind of weather that we're experiencing here in the western half of the state, which is uh, hot and sunny, I would assume, correct? Uh yeah, the summer doesn't want to go. Yeah. yeah, well that's okay. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. I yeah. love the sun. Yeah, that's okay. And and maybe we can talk a little bit about getting your car ready for winter, even as we have this warm uh, summer weather. But, but Teresa, I think it's a, a fascinating mm-hmm. story about why you came to be um, so well-versed in auto mechanics. Uh, you actually were yeah. very successful in a whole other career. I did. I was an engineer. I worked for DuPont for 12 years. Um, did failure analysis, and I was a manager there. But I was an auto airhead. I felt taken advantage of and mistreated every time I went to get my car fixed or get some maintenance done. Um, I waited to the last minute to do any repairs, and I always thought I needed a guy to help me if something happened with my car, And which is crazy because I was an engineer, and I still subscribe to that stereotype that cars aren't for women. I'm not going to get it. This isn't for me. And so I started looking for resources um, online or a female mechanic to empower myself so I would start making better choices, um, and I couldn't find one. So I thought, hey, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to learn to work on cars, and I'm going to create these resources and provide services for women because we're actually the number one customer in the automotive industry, and many of us don't know that. We spend more money on our cars than men, and there's more women drivers now than men of all age groups. Yet so many of us feel like auto airheads. So it's been my mission to educate and empower women through their cars to include more women in the automotive industry. Um, and I do that through my book and car tips, and I have a service center in Philly that hires all female mechanics, and there's a salon there to get your nails done while you wait for your car. So I'm all about women and female empowerment and how I can help them make better choices with their cars, be smart consumers and confident drivers. And so you come never out, feel taken advantage of again. <laughs> that, that's a good plan. You come out with Girls Auto Clinic Glove Box Guide, um, and it's interesting to me yeah. because I, I think women, and, and you tell me if I'm wrong about this, women might begin mm-hmm. to believe it because they have been told it all their lives. You don't know anything about cars and just let the guys handle it. Uh, is that a, a barrier you have to break through to convince ladies that uh, uh, you certainly can and are capable of uh, knowing about cars and, and don't believe what you're being told? Well, you know, it's not even just what you're being told. It's what you see. You don't see women in cars, working on cars, or doing this stuff. And if you don't see it, you don't believe it's something that's for you. And it's always been men. And so that's what we tend to just believe. And and to me, I'm always like, it's just about confidence. Half of these guys don't know what they're doing either. (laughs) They just think that they do. I came out of the gym the other day, and I saw two guys try to jump the car, and they were doing it wrong. But I didn't want to go up to them and say, like, what's up, guys? You need some help? Because... Male egos can be very fragile, so I thought they'll figure it out. <laughs> but, you know, it's, just, it's about knowing that it's possible that you can tackle these things, that you are capable of learning it. But it's someone explaining it to you in a way that's relatable, right? I get it. There's going to be no shame here. I'm not going to shame you into telling you you need something or making you feel bad that you didn't take care of your car properly. It's I call it everything less and nothing more. There's no technical talk that's going to make your eyes glaze over, you know, we tell you exactly what you need to know about your car so you can make the right choice and feel good about your choice that you made. You don't have buyer's remorse later or, you know, blame your mechanic for all the stuff that's going wrong with your car. Um, so, yeah, that's the purpose of it. It's just it's changing the way you think about your vehicle and just educating women. And when you, you educate them and they know how to make the right choice, they make it with confidence and they feel good about themselves. One of the impressive things about the book is uh, you do get over the basics that everybody should need to know, but then you get into some some pretty minute details, and you have a gift for explaining why a car operates the way that it does, whether you're talking suspension, you're talking um, underneath the hood, whatever it is that you're talking about, explaining it so that people have an understanding of what's going on. So the light that comes on 
on the dash um, actually means something to you, uh, and the noise right. that you hear, yeah. yeah, that they all they all have significance for you, and you can uh, understand what's going on. Uh, I, I think that's a yeah, very you know, important I, aspect. Oh, thank you. Yeah, when I was in school and I was learning about this stuff, I was like, "That's it." Oh my goodness, I can't wait to start talking to women about this and say, listen, ladies, here's what you need to know. This isn't hard stuff. This isn't rocket science, right? These are the basics. This is what you need to understand. This is how it works. This is why it fails. This is how you prevent it from failing, right? And this is how you talk to a mechanic when you do have issues. Um, you know, so it's, yeah, I love doing this stuff because it's, it's so important to know how to take care of your cars. We spend a lot of money on them. I tell women we often treat our three hundred dollar bags, and we treat our twenty five thousand dollar cars. You know, um, uh-huh. and it's really because we just are, you know, very powerless. We're, we're not educated, and we don't want to be right. We don't think it's for us. And so I'm here to tell tell women, yeah, it's for you, and men, yeah, this is for women as well. I know this book is great for all drivers, men and women. You know, but I'm a female, <laughs> and I was an auto airhead, so I really wanted to relate to other women who felt like me. But like you said, this book has a lot of great information that's going to help every driver and empower them to make the right choice with their car, not just for, you know, maintenance, but emergencies, what to do in an emergency, you know, dashboard lights when they come on. There's some you can ignore. There's some you don't have to pay attention to right away. We talk about that and which ones to panic over. Um, you know, so, and also buying a car, the most important decision you can make is the type of car you buy. And people don't understand that and they think, oh, it's pretty, I like it, I can afford the car note, I can afford the insurance. And then they end up having buyer's remorse later because they don't know how to take care of it. Um, I see it all the time, people with car notes and $3,000 repair bills and still have a car note on the, on the car. Um, you know, so it's just, it's, it's helping really change how you feel about your car, making the right choice. And saving you a lot of money and heartbreak down the line. Patrice Absolutely. Banks is our guest here on Indiana in the Morning. She's written the Girls Auto Clinic Glove Box Guide. She has her all-female operated garage, uh, which includes yeah. a, a hair and a nail salon. <laughs> the she canic she canic workshops. I love that. That's yes, fantastic. That's what I call my car savvy ladies now. She canic. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you yeah. you recommend that everybody name their car too. Yeah, you know it's. It's um, you want to change the relationship you have with your car. I tell women we often treat our cars like our bad exes treated us. What do you look for in a relationship? You want someone to really know you, to take care of you in sickness and in health, to be committed to you and not cheat, right? To listen and communicate with you. Um, but we don't do that with our cars, right? We're not committed to taking care of them when they're sick, even when they're in health with their maintenance, when they need repairs. We don't take them in. You know, um, they're communicating us with us every day. I tell women, um, mechanics diagnose cars a lot by hearing, seeing, feeling, smelling. So if we can hear, see, and feel it and smell it, so can you. Mm -hmm. Your car is constantly communicating with you every day, you know, and not to ignore it, to listen to it, you know. And one of the big mistakes that we make is shop hop, or we cheat on our cars. We go around to different mechanics because, you know, we want a better price, or we just don't have what I call the PCT, or primary care technician. Um, And that causes you a lot of pain and heartache and confusion down the line with your car because mechanics have different levels that yeah. they're at. You know, I have a I have the same PCP, uh, primary care physician, and every year I go to him or her for, well, mine's the guy, so I go to him for all of my needs and my checkups, but why do we go around to a different mechanic with our car? Yeah. That, that's going to alleviate 75% of your anxiety is finding a technician that you know is going to take care of you and take care of your car. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's just things like this that we don't recognize, the little mistakes that we're making that's costing us a lot of money down the line and, like, a lot of heartache and pain and and also leaves us open to being taken advantage of. You sit down and you decide to write this book, The Girls Auto Clinic Glove Box Guide, and uh, you come out Mm -hmm. with the finished product, which is tremendous. But... Thank you. Is it the book that you thought you were writing when you started? Um, so I never even intended to write a book. I'm not a writer. I'm an engineer. You know, we're not known for writing well. We're known to be very technical, and we're also not known for explaining things very well. Um, you know, one of my favorite things that you say that, you know, you were talking about is it's just really easy to digest, and I think about a lot. Um, Albert Einstein's, you know, quote that I'm paraphrasing is, you can't explain to a five-year-old you don't understand it yourself. And really, the book came about 
um, from my car care workshops. I started doing these workshops every single month. I was still in college for automotive technology, and I just couldn't wait to share this information. So I started doing free car care workshops every month with women, showing them things on their cars, showing them parts and stuff. And it was great information, but there was a lot. And so women just said, can you give us something to take home that we can reference again? So I started just printing out, like, some of the things I was talking about, putting in a PowerPoint presentation. I printed it out, threw some pictures in there, and said, hey, keep this in your glove box and reference it when you need it. Take notes in it, everything that you learned from the workshop. And that was really the beginning of the book. Um, people said, this is a great book. You should put this together as a book. And I thought, all right, I self-published it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm just out here trying to get this information out to as many people as possible because I know they need it. Mm-hmm. And um, I just so, you know, the book, the self-published book did well and people loved it. So I ended up getting a published deal with Touchtone. And, um, you know, they really helped me create this to be an amazing book like this with illustrations, right, and just very concise and everything, you know, that I would want to put in this book and a lot of my own personal auto airhead stories and other people. So it's fun, it's interactive, it's engaging, and most important, it's, it's very relatable and digestible. Like you said, it's an easy read. You're not supposed to keep it on your bookshelf. You keep it in your glove box. Get it dirty. Get, you know, dirty fingerprints on it. It's supposed to be useful as a reference. Um, to help you with any questions that that will come up with your car, you'll find it in the book. And if you can't find it in our book, we have a Facebook page for women. It's called the She Canic Community. It connects you with female drivers. And so you add yourself to that community, you ask a question in there, and you'll get an answer from a female mechanic. Final minute with Patrice Banks this morning. Patrice, I said we would do this. We're getting ready for the winter season despite the heat that we have right mm-hmm. now. Give me two or three things that need to be done to our cars before we get to the winter. Okay, so one of the things that I want people to know is that cars are becoming a lot more advanced and safer to drive, and they're lasting longer. They're making them to last longer. So this whole winterizing your vehicle is not really something that we have to do anymore. Get it ready for summer. Get it ready for winter. What you do want to do is make sure that your brakes are good. So I would take your – if you have an oil change or something do coming up – Check your brakes. Um, make sure your tires have good tread on them. Obviously, if you're driving in the snow, on the ice, you want to make sure your brakes and tires because they're the ones that stop the car. If you live somewhere that gets a ton of snow, you know, that gets every, you know, every two weeks in the mountains, you, you kind of know how, what you have to do to take care of your car in ter- terms of snow tires and things. But another thing that I would do that, that is helpful is get, like, a coolant flush. If you have a car over 100,000 miles on it, Get a coolant flush before winter just to make sure you're protecting your engine, right, and oil change. I mean, just things, typical maintenance things that you would do for the car anyway. There's nothing you have to add to the car or special um, for winter. Um, you know, just just you want to keep in mind winter can be rough on, on the car, um, so you want to make sure you have fresh fluids in there if your car is getting older, brakes, tires. Another thing is your battery. Batteries hate the car in the cold or the heat. And so if it's too cold and the battery's getting old, right, it's about four years old, batteries last only about five, six years, maybe, well, four to six years. And so if you know it's coming up to four or six years, you're more likely to have a, you know, um, need a jump start. It'll die in the cold. And so you might want to be proactive and get that changed if you know it's coming up. There you go. So That's it's, Patrice it's Banks. On the car, yeah. We're, we're, we're out of time, but that's fabulous. The book is okay. wonderful. The Girls Auto Clinic Glove Box Thank Guide. You. Thank you, Patrice, for being with us. Of course. I had fun. Thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Take care. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. It's WCCS at AM 1160 and FM 101.1. The Girls Auto Clinic Club Box Guide.